Trump speaking at a GOP convention in Greenville, North Carolina. That speech marks his first public event in more than three months. GOP organizers say the appearance comes as the Republican Party is launching its campaign to retake the House and Senate in the midterm elections next year. Because people respect that I do want to make America great again. We were doing that. We were doing that at a level that nobody's ever seen and putting America first ahead of China and ahead of all of these countries. And people know that that's where we were. The former president carried North Carolina during both of his presidential campaigns. Well, the Senate returns to Capitol Hill this week to get back to work on another slate of negotiations as well. Among the issues, uh, infrastructure as well as one of those issues they're dealing with. Dr. Fauci is also under renewed scrutiny and employers are still having a hard time hiring. That sets us up to talk to former state Senate President Mike Karadopoulos joining us again this morning to talk the latest political headlines. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Great to be on. Uh, great to have you again. Let's talk about how close is the Biden administration right now to getting out that infrastructure packages. Both sides kind of move toward the middle a little bit. That's correct, Ryan. At the start of this negotiation, President Biden started about $2.3 trillion for what we call infrastructure. And the Republicans started around $600 billion for infrastructure. So big gap. But since they've been negotiating for the last month or so, that gap has been reduced. Biden has reduced his number to $1.7 trillion, and the Republicans have increased their number to about $1 trillion. The big fight here is on a couple of points, not just the overall spent, but how will they raise the money to actually pay for it? Democrats are saying, let's raise the the tax, what they call the corporate tax or the business tax. Republicans have said that's the last thing you want to do as the economy starts to recover. Republicans say, hey, look, we have a ton of COVID-19 money left over. Let's use that money to um, repair our roads and bridges, et cetera. That seems to be the big divide at this point, as well as some areas where some people are saying, look, this isn't necessarily infrastructure when you're spending on, on what they call the Green New Deal. Let's focus just on roads and bridges as opposed to some of the other social aspects found in the bill. Mike, let's shift topics now. Dr. Fauci is certainly in the spotlight as well. The origin of the virus is the, the reason why the emails that were leaked uh, have, have really had one side. Of course, Republicans now a couple of leaders calling for him to resign. The White House saying, though, they support him. Where do we stand on this? Well, unfortunately, everything is politicized now, including science. And we're seeing that, that you saw from these emails more than anything else is that Dr. Fauci, much like so many of us, were confused by the information. At one point, he said you need masks. At, behind the scenes, he's saying, hey, masks aren't really effective. At one point, he was getting information saying this horrible uh, virus came from China, yet publicly said anybody who supports that idea is a conspiracy theorist. So you're seeing behind the scenes what he was dealing with. And to put it mildly, it was an inconsistent message from Dr. Fauci. Uh, you're seeing right at this point liberals supporting him. You're seeing conservatives go after him. I, I think the reality is, is that you're going to find out, like most people, he was confused, but he was the leader. And that's why a lot of people are frustrated that he should have been more clear on what would be the, the lab theory or on the idea of how effective masks truly would be in this terrible crisis. We'll see what develops there. Let's finish on this topic. Workforce, of course, we've talked about a lot of people needing workers. Ford is changing the way they do unemployment insurance. As a result, what is it going to take to get back to normal? And has it made a difference in the last week or so? Well, the good news is there are more jobs created last month than the previous month, almost 600,000 nationwide. But what you're seeing, and I, I saw it again this weekend, you walk in just about any restaurant across Florida, you're going to see a help wanted sign. And the logical decision is, of course, if you're making more money not going to work as opposed to going work, a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to go to work. I think as these uh, extended benefits start to run out, you'll see that people make the logical decision that they're going to make more money finally working as opposed to not working. I think that's the reality we're looking at right now. And so people who want a job, they're all out there. They're just trying to make that, that cost benefit analysis for themselves and their family uh, at this point. But I think you're going to see more and more jobs being filled because people are going to make that logical decision. Hey, I'm going to finally make more money working than stay at home. I think that's what's going to happen. Let's see if the rest of the country follows that measure that we've done here in Florida. Luckily, things are definitely on the mend here in our state. We'll see how things play out. Mike, got to leave it there for now. Always appreciate, appreciate you joining us. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. Look forward to it. Thank you, Ryan. Coming up, the FDA has approved a new drug to help people fight obesity. Still ahead, how it works and the success rate in some. Plus, a hot bath for exercise. A new study suggests they might provide the same benefits. We've got more on that coming up next if you stay with us on Good Day Orlando.